Uh, deodorant does you no good in the container until you take the cap off and you apply it to your body. But understand something. The Word of God is sitting there. The principles of God are sitting there, right? With everything that you need to transform your life. But until you interact and engage with scripture, until you start to actually pray for yourself, until, until you actually start to ask God, give me wisdom, give me strength, show me what I'm supposed to do. God, I know what you told me to do, but I'm going to do it your way because these are the guardrails you put up to keep me out of the gutter until you actually interact. But what God is saying, you will never be changed. And so many of us have tried to look the part, right? We got the bowling bag, and, and, and we, you know, today we're looking good. We're sitting in the right seat. We say amen to the right things, right? But when it comes down to, uh, to it, how many of us have actually been changed? See, the thing is, right, we need washing. It does us no good until we actually interact, until we actually get it in our hearts. And so many of us have word in our head, but we don't have word in our hearts. Right? So many of us understand, we can, we can memorize, we can talk about it, but when it comes to actually doing what the Word says, that's where our struggle is. Why? Because we're spending so much time feeding the flesh and starving the spirit. So listen up, everybody. This is the one and only Pastor Marseille Winder from BVCC in Hampton, Virginia. Uh, welcome to King Legend Talks. It's an honor to have you here on the platform today. I'm really looking forward to this conversation, man. But so, tell me how you feeling today? Oh man, it's good to be here, man. I'm I'm just I'm just blessed, man, to be a part. Blessed to be with you, walking this journey of faith, man, and just making disciples together, man. It's, it's truly a blessing. Absolutely. You notice I got on the BVCC hat today. Yeah, you, you, hey, I got to get me one of them. Absolutely. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it, man. So. We're going to dive deep into your journey. You know, you becoming the person you are today, uh, the disciple you have become, you know, and the influence you've been able to have an impact on people's lives, you know, and showing them what it truly means to follow Jesus. But before we get there, let's go ahead and give people a little bit about your background, where are you from, you know, um, and just give us a quick, I guess, story about your childhood, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah, look, you you really, you really got me feeling old after all the technical difficulties, man. But I'm I'm actually from Hampton, Virginia. Um, lived here most of my life. Uh, local local boy, football player. Went off to college. Um, blessed to go to uh, North Carolina A&T State University, and uh, there's where my, I met my wife. Um, and we got three beautiful kids. And you know, I'm I'm a kid, man. I grew up in church whole life. Uh, but like many of us, man, just just I uh, didn't have a relationship with Jesus, you know, and over time, um, I went and just started doing my own thing. You know, I had freedom. I had what I wanted. Uh, and then I met my wife and she's like, Hey, I got saved. And I'm like, Oh, great. So, uh, I'm, I got ulterior motives and things like that, but you know, she's the one that really, she's like, Hey, I want you to come be my pastor. You know, when I met her pastor and all of that stuff I learned growing up in Sunday school, all that stuff in vacation Bible school, it came to life, man. It was like the Holy Spirit took everything, all the scriptures memorized, all of them plays and rehearsals, all of that stuff, and right. just brought it to life. It was like the word became so real. Uh, and I've been walking with Christ, man, now for for a good minute. You know, I've been a pastor for about the past eight years, I think it is. Uh, we started the church out of a high school uh, in an auditorium with a dream, you know. And, uh, you know, we, we're not one of the kind of churches that left because we couldn't get along because the money was messed up. It was just we had a vision uh, to make disciples, you know, had a vision to connect people to Jesus and help them grow uh, right. and to be active in the community. So for me, that's really just kind of how I come to that place of growing up in church. I'm actually a third generation pre preacher, believe it or not. But, um, you know, just seeing the prayers of uh, my father, my grandfather come to fruition, you know, just just means the world. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been a blessing. Wow. So. Let me just make sure I got this right. You grew up in church. You had the word in you, but at some part you were just like not applying it to your life and doing your own thing. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, it was, it was like, it was up here in my head, but it wasn't really in my heart. You know, I knew the right things to say. Um, I could, I could get everybody and say certain things. They'd be like, Oh, amen. You know, he's so anointed this and the third, but it wasn't in my heart. And the moment I got out doing my own thing, 
you know, I was doing my own thing. Right. So you had the head knowledge, but it wasn't in your heart at that time. And then it was something about your wife that drew you into the word in a way where you had to apply it to you. Just kind of briefly go over that moment for us. Yeah, it's, it's so funny, man, because, you know, we started dating. Uh, she wasn't saying she grew up in church, didn't know anything about about Christ. And, you know, we're, we're on the campus and whatnot. We're dating before she gets saved. Then she gets saved. She's, hey, you got to go be my pastor. And I'm like, uh, okay, we can do that. And I started going to church with her. Wasn't really focused, you know, trying to, I was actually her distraction. And, you know, her pastor spoke over her life. And he was like, hey, you know, there's somebody in your life. He didn't really know me like that. But he's like, somebody in your life who is a distraction and you need to let them go. So she actually broke up with me, right? And I'm Wow, like, she let you go. She let me go. But I respect that about her because she had a standard, you know what I'm saying? And through that, um, eventually I started going to church with her and and this pastor was talking about relationship and not religion. That's one of the things that always stuck in my mind. He was like, hey, we need to have a relationship with God and not just religion. Um, and for me, it got real. You know what I'm saying? And it was like through it all, uh, my growth just really took off because we're out there witnessing the people, we're serving, um, you know, doing doing everything. You know, I was the usher, I was parking cars, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, I'm ready to go, you know, and all that stuff that I was learning. It, it became real, you know. So for her to have that standard, uh, we've been married now for going on 19 years and, you know, never look back. Man, that's such a blessing in disguise, to be honest with you, because, you know, to have someone motivate you to do the right thing and get on the right path, that's, that had to be, be like, God-driven for that, you know, to happen in your life that way. Um, and then just the way that it just sparked a fire in you to make you want to really get out here and, and preach the gospel. Tell me about that process. How did you go from, you know, school to preaching the gospel in the way that you're doing today? Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually an engineer by trade. Um, and, you know, I, I went to school getting ready to, you know, go the whole career route, all of that. And I actually, I, and I do, I'm a, I'm a bivocational pastor now. Uh, but for me, um, it was kind of when I was in college where that call really became real. And it was through serving and through uh, evangelizing, right? We used to go to the to the mall and witness to people. You know, we college kids going up and down the up and down the mall. People, you know, laughing at us. This that, and the third saying, "Get out of my face!" But there were people who were receptive to the gospel, and when they were receiving the gospel, it was the most fulfilling thing that I ever experienced. You know, so for me, it was like, "Hey, this is real." You know what I'm saying? It's not just about you come to church, but it's people out here who are hurting and struggling. And through sharing my faith with them, talking with them, uh, it really just kind of it, it resonated with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't that kind of guy that just grew up saying, I'm going to be a preacher. Even though I was a third generation, all that stuff, it wasn't like, hey, my whole life, I'm going to be a preacher. I'm going to be a pastor. It was through that whole course of just using my gifts and trying different things out and figuring out what fit. You know what I mean? And then later kind of recognizing the need for training. Um, I was like, yo, I need, I need to figure out what I'm doing. So I enrolled in seminary, went and got some training, sat under teaching, you know what I'm saying? And actually went through that process of people pouring into me so that I would be prepared and equipped. Wow. That's deep, man. And so what happened, like that got you on that path where discipleship was your focus? Like when it comes to being a pastor, you know, one thing I've noticed about you and what you really teach about is real discipleship, like what it actually means to be a disciple and follow Christ. Why is that so important in today's church? Man, I tell you, you know, it's unfortunate because it's it's not really focused on um, in today's church. And, you know, Jesus, he, he didn't say go make church. Uh, he, he didn't tell us to go and make members. He said go and make disciples, you know, and that always just resonated and stuck out to me. I'm like, why is the Bible talking about this? But I'm not hearing it. You know, and I'm not knocking churches because at the end of the day, the church, that's that's Jesus' bride. You know, uh, at the end of the day, it was this whole thing. It just felt like something was missing. You know, and I would go to churches. I would go to different places. And it was like, why am I not hearing this? You know, and, it, and predominantly in African-American church, I wasn't hearing it. But then I will go to, you know, some some uh, other churches of, of other cultures. I would hear it more. And I started digging, you know what I mean? And just started looking around. It's like, OK, this is holistic. You know, God wants to transform the whole the whole man. Uh, he wants to transform every ball, every part of us. He doesn't just want us to be an emotionalism. 
He just doesn't want us to come to see, to come give money, to be an entrepreneur, right? He wants us to become more and more like Christ. And that's what discipleship really drives us towards. Absolutely. And, and that's a big deal, man, because I can tell you from the outside looking in, I grew up in church and we, we talked about sin, hell, and heaven so much and faith so much. We really lost out on the the meat, which is discipleship. Like, who are we in Christ? You know, that's a big deal because you can really walk this walk and not even know what authority you have. You don't even know who you are in Christ. You know the rules, you know the regulations, but you don't know exactly who you are in Christ or why we run this race, like you were talking about. Um, I, I think that's a big deal to keep people connected. And honestly, um, I didn't know too much about biblical community, biblical community um, until I walked into your church and saw the way that y'all operate, you know, how everyone is active and actually serving, you know, how the importance of that is to not just be seated and, and go home and then come back next Sunday. Um, that's, that's a big deal when it comes to actually being a true disciple of Christ. Uh, moving forward, as far as like right now for 2023, what is your focus as a pastor right now? Yeah, so right now, I mean, my, my big focus at our church is, we, we call it 2023, the year of connection. You know, and that's connecting to God, connecting to each other, and connecting to purpose. You know, sometimes, we, you know, we, we confuse purpose as like this whole thing of, hey, that's how I'm going to get rich, or that's how I'm going to start my business. But right, God's given us a purpose where he created us to do. Um, and that purpose should always align with the kingdom. So for me, that whole 2023 purpose is really getting our ministry and even myself personally just going all in uh, on discipleship, on our mission uh, to impact the nation, to impact the world uh, for the glory of God. You know, from, from every single person who steps foot in that door, that they truly understand that, hey, God wants you to not only be a disciple who looks like Jesus, but ultimately he wants to empower you to make other disciples who, who look like him too. Absolutely. Now, you got away with your delivery that I got to say is very unique. It's, it's a gift from God, man, the way you're able to articulate the message and, and explain it to people the way even a child could understand. Did you always have that skill, like when it came to being able to explain things and using metaphors or painting pictures so people can actually understand things? I, I would say it's probably just when I'm preaching. <laughs> Um, I, I think I think that God gives us for our why. And really, at the end of the day, um, I realized that I had to be me. You, you know what I mean? I, I had to preach it the way God gave it to me. It's going to line up with the word. Right. But, you know, I, I'll preach what I mean. You know, I'll, I'll use videos. I'll use uh, jokes. Right. I'll use whatever analogies and metaphors and all these kind of things, um, because that's just the way God explains it to me. You know, I could be driving down the road and God will show me something uh, and it makes perfect sense. Right. So at the end of the day, um, and Jesus did that, you know, that's the way Jesus taught his story. He taught in ways that were relatable. Uh, and, and I believe that all of life, you know, is it, pointing to God, you know, so we just have to look and let the Holy Spirit, you know, kind of talk to us. But yeah, when, when it comes to like trying to explain something to my kids, that's a whole different story. They look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> now, um, as far as spiritual warfare, what is your perspective on that? Um, it's real. You know, it, it, it's real. You know, the, the Bible says that we, we fight uh, not against flesh and blood, right, against principalities, power, spiritual weakness in high places. And we got to realize that just like God has an ordered kingdom, Satan has a counterfeit kingdom. You, you know what I mean? And, and get into that place of recognizing, even when you deal with a difficult person, um, you may not, you're thinking that person got a bad attitude or you're thinking um, that that person uh, is, is against you, right? There's a, there's a spirit right? Trying to influence that person could be, could be oppressing, possessing, you know, whatever those different things look like. Uh, but those, it's a spiritual battle, right? And, and I think uh, we, we kid ourselves when we think that it's not. Absolutely. Now we know we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and high places. Um, and I think it's important that people understand that even when we're faced with challenges in life, that is definitely an attack on your life because you must be looking at things through the spiritual first. You know, a lot of people want to look at things through the natural lens every time something happens. And I feel like that's where a lot of people really go wrong when it comes to this walk. Um, you're, you, it, let's just be real. You got a target on your back if you're a child of God. 
If you're a true believer, you got a target on your back because you're a threat to the enemy if you walk in your full authority. Um, let's talk about walking in authority, walking in purpose. As a believer, what are some of the things that a spiritual infant can learn um, that can really help them in this in this new journey that they're on when it comes to that? Yeah, so when, when you're in the infant, right, I, I think a big piece is really starting to get into the Word of God. You know, because the word of God, even when G, you know, Jesus was tempted, uh, he was going up against the devil and, and he wasn't, you know, going crazy and, and, and casting down and pulling all these things. He kept saying it is written. Right. So the, the, the we have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Right. So we're able to go uh, when, when we begin to give God his word back and give the enemy God's word. That's the number one place of authority. Right. Uh, I think too being around community is really critical. Because, you know, in, in, if, if you watch a nature show, for example, right, and you see the lion on the prowl, right, and, and the devil is talked about as a royal, royal lion. So if he's going around, he doesn't go after the pack, right? He may try to break the pack apart, but he's going after the one limping, the one struggling, right? He's going after the one that, that's out in isolation, right? So we talk about a lot of times, don't suffer in silence, um, dwell in insulated community, right? So having community around you, people to hold you accountable, people to encourage you, Right. is really important. But it really does start with the word, man, because there's so much going on today that's not Bible. Right. And, and that's really unfortunate um, because we can manipulate. Right. People can can get, air, you know, false doctrine, all these kind of things. Right. But but I tell people a lot of times like, hey, just like the Bereans, if you look in the book of Acts, they were the kind of people that they didn't just take what you said at face value. Unfortunately, people go to church and they get prayed on and not prayed for. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's not every single church. I'm not saying that it means, but that does happen, unfortunately. But it's a, it's a place where we really got to get into the word and understand truth so that we can truly walk in authority. That's powerful, man, because the word, the scripture is literally the basic instructions before leaving Earth. And I find the number one trick in the enemy is to get you to not read it, because if you don't read it, you won't know nothing. <laughs> and, that, and that's just the way it is. It's like. That is literally the instruction manual. God put everything that we needed to know right there in the Bible for us. Um, yeah. One of the things I'm starting to um, realize more and more, we really don't have an excuse. You know, we don't have an excuse to to not know certain things because God written the law on all of our hearts. And so there's a lot of people that I realize don't really have a head issue when it comes to, do I think God is real? Maybe he not real. It really comes down to them having a heart issue, not wanting to accept what they know is already written on their heart to be true. Um, and, and it's sad because of the society we live in. A lot of people are basing everything on feelings and emotions. Um, what is your take on the mentality of the youth in our society today? And what can we do to have a better positive impact on them as uh, believers in Christ? Yeah, man, I, I think our, our young people are under such a barrage of attacks, right? So um, in the course of a Sunday, for example, let's just take you, you go to church, right? You, you're going to spend um, 45 minutes, an hour, sometimes two, three, depending on what church you go to, right? But you get a very small fraction of your, of your week uh, getting instruction. But as soon as they leave, or sometimes even while they're still there, their phones are constantly bombarding them with images, right? They're being preyed on. Um, you know, by all sorts of things. They're seeing stuff that I didn't see when I was growing up at a much younger age, right? So I, I think they're under so much. Uh, and then the whole concept of truth is being eroded, right? So it used to be that, hey, if somebody was a, was an adult, you just listen to them because they were an adult, right? Somebody was a person of authority, they listened to you, right? That's not the case anymore. And even this whole thing of like, I identify as X, Y, Z, that whole, your truth is now your truth. But even by definition, that can't be true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you truth has to be one thing. So folks are kind of like, hey, this is my truth. This is your truth. But I think our kids are just under such, uh, there, there's there's such a um, a lack, I guess, of, 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 of a standard of truth anymore. You know, so everybody's got their own version. And that's very unfortunate. But I think at the same time, it really behooves us as parents, as a church, to really be relational with our kids, to really be active. And it can't be that whole, uh, you know, do it, do as I say, but not as I do, right? You got to model mm. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So it really becomes very important 
um, the individual parents are right there for their kids, but then also as a church that we're investing in, in that next generation. That's deep, man. You definitely got to lead by example. And um, you really hit an important note there when you brought up truth, because when I think about truth, I think about Jesus because he's the way, the truth and the life. So when you think about truth and all the attacks that's happening in the world today against the truth, one plus one equals three, you know, <laughs> when you attack the truth, to me, it's actually an attack on Jesus Christ because he stands for truth, you know? And so it's, it's agenda driven. Number one, a lot of the things that's happening is intentional. Um, I don't believe in coincidences. I do. I do believe all of this stuff in the spiritual is happening on purpose. Um, and what's important is that we put on our full armor of God. Um, and I don't hear a lot of churches talk about that anymore, you know, and, and that's such an important essential to who we are as believers. You know, it's one thing to be a believer, but you got to know about the armor. You know, that's a big deal. Um, so that way, the when the attacks come, we're prepared to handle them. Um, in your life, can you give me an example where putting that armor on was was crucial to your survival as a believer? Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> today, <laughs> now, it's like it's daily, right? It's a daily battle. It's a daily struggle. Um, you know, and, and I think, and I don't even go back. You know, we're talking about spiritual infants earlier. Uh, I remember when I was like, okay, I was talking about my wife at the time, and I remember, um, and my, my girlfriend at the time was now my wife, but I remember kind of saying, okay, I'm going all in for for Christ, and I remember all of these other temptations coming at me. Right. People, you know, girls on campus, like just being bold and blazing. Right. And I'm like, whoa, that never happened before. You know, and it was like, I'm not that good looking. You know, I don't have that. Much so I knew right away that was the enemy. Right. But getting to that place of just kind of girding my, my mind, taking up the shield of faith uh, and then having those scriptures that I've been trying to memorize. Right. Because, you know, it talks about when the enemy comes in like a flood that, that God will raise up a standard. Right. And I'm a firm believer that when you get attacked, the enemy is going to run into what you've been taught. Right. So you, you can't give out. You can't fight with something that you don't have. You know, so really at the end of the day, for me, that was a, a key turning point in my life. And I remember making that decision and it was the best decision I ever made, because I believe that a lot of people at a young age, they spend the years from 18 to 30, either setting a course in a foundation that they're going to reap for years to come. Or they set a course and a foundation that they're going to have to pay for for years to come, mm. right? And I see that happen so often at, at a very young age. Um, but for me, that that's a, that was a time where I really just had to kind of dig my heels in and, and really and really stand. Absolutely. Now I, I got some surprise questions for you, man. They're from the church, okay? Right. Um, so this one question, I'm not going to say who it's from. I'm just going to ask you the question: charcoal or gas grill, and why? Charcoal all day. And what's the reason for going charcoal? Hey, I'm not gonna call Greg. I'm not gonna call gas blasphemy, but I'm close. <laughs> charcoal all day. Okay. And then um, another question I have is, why did you choose to plant a church instead of seeking a pastoral role at an established church? Man, great question. I get that question a lot. Um, for me. You know, our vision, the vision that God gave me was really to be relational, um, to pull off a lot of tradition, not to say that tradition is always a bad thing. Right. But getting to that place of like pulling a lot of that stuff off and growing up in that setting and even kind of being asked. Right. Hey, just just hang around. This can be yours or you can go anywhere you want. Um, but I realized that there was so much red tape to fight through. There was so much non-spiritual things going on. You know, God just placed it in my heart to to start, start fresh. Right. So we went out and I talked to, you know, just prayed and recruited a team and we went out and we started, but for me, it was really about seeing. And I think it was one of those things where God was going to get more glory of seeing something start, uh, that was organic. And that was always, that was also uh, fashion after his image. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's important to me too, considering the fact that, you know, you guys kind of started at Kickington high school, you know, um, and, seeing the progress from now and being so consistent, how important is it to be consistent in this walk? Cause you know how it is. It's, it's easy when you get all the attacks from the enemy to just hang the hat up and just 
just kind of give up a little bit. So yeah. during those times and those seasons when you felt like maybe, all right, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm trying my best and, and things is not going the way I feel like it should go. What was your encouragement through those seasons? I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's several, several encouragements for me. I mean, number one, first of all, we don't do this um, for accolades. We do this to please the king, right? We do this so that when we go in and in, in meet Jesus and he gives us our crown, we can lay him down at his feet, right? So for me, it's about serving an audience of one, you know, serving Jesus and, and trying to honor him. Um, the other piece, though, that really encourages me in those times is I got a great team. You know, when it comes down to, you know, a lot of people talk about how it's so easy to get burnt out as a church planner. Well, we've got people who work, you know, and they're, they're right along there with me. They're like, hey, I got your back. You know, we, we're going to do what we need to do. And they let me be myself. You know, they let my wife be herself. So the people of our church are great, loving people. You know what I'm saying? So for me in those times, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's always easy because it's not. You know, it's, it's hard going to work, right? It's hard, uh, you know, preparing for a sermon at night. It's hard running up and down the road with kids and whatnot. But having people in your corner, um, and that's what we talk about, biblical community. I can go at any time and say, hey, y'all, I'm tired. I'm worn out. And they're not going to be like, well, that's the pastor's job. You need to preach this Sunday. You know, they're going to be like, hey, we got you. You know, so so those things for me, um, and I'm a firm believer in faithfulness, you know, so you look at like Joseph's life, right? Joseph got the dream, but my man went through all sorts of chaos before he ever saw it come to pass, you know? So for me, it's being in a place of just being faithful because um, I believe if I'm faithful in due season, I'll read. Absolutely, man. That's powerful. Um, I have another question for you, for you from the church. Is there a sermon, conversation, or interaction where uh, you wish you could do it over? Mm. Man, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to do some homework on this one because somebody might, might have a message they don't like or something. <laughs> now, I think. I think at the end of the day, there, there's always going to be um, times where we get up there. There's sermons where I'm like, I, I wish I could have that one back. But then there's somebody out there. It's like, man, you when you when God spoke to you. It, it really spoke to me, you know? So sometimes when I think it's the worst sermon, there's somebody out there. It's like, that changed my life. Then there's times where I think it's the best sermon. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know what I'm saying? So I think for me, it's really been in a place of trusting him. Um, so I, I guess my answer would be like, I don't really want any of them back. Um, I want to always get better. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but at the end of the day, I need to trust. I'm trusting that he is speaking to the person who needs to hear it. Absolutely. And um, one thing I can say, brother, is that every time I'm in there, I, I can hear the Holy Spirit speaking right through you, man. And um, the message is definitely for someone, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, I don't want to put my wife on blast, but sometimes she'll be like, why he hear my business? <laughs> <laughs> because the message is really that relatable for a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and from coming from your perspective, you may not even realize that while you're up there speaking, you know, but I really believe that the Holy Spirit is using you as a vessel to really reach people and connect with them. You know what I'm saying? And so I just want to say, keep doing that. I'm happy to be a part of the church. You know, um, just me being there was definitely, I was called to be there. Um, I do know for a fact that I was disconnected from the church. I, I, I really was, man. I, I was, I had gotten to the place in my life where fellowship wasn't important to me. Right. And you start to work out your own salvation and it's okay to do that. But when you do it without fellowship, that's when you lose out on that community. You know what I'm saying? That's when you lose out on that accountability. Right. That's when you lose out on the, um, the prayers and faith from other people that can intercede for you when you're going through struggle. Um, like you said, we do life together. Um, and I think that's such a big deal. And I love to see that we're able to do that here in Hampton, Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, and your, what your story, man, is so common today because a lot of people have experienced church hurt. They've experienced frustration with the church. Um, they've been in a place where it's like, you know, I've been here, I've been there, and I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting fed. And, and sometimes it, that could be for a, a lot of different reasons. Uh, and some, sometimes, sometimes people give up. They're like, it's no point. The church is just, it's, it's a lost cause. But Jesus calls his church the bride. 
you know, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm there's all different types of churches. And, and we are one church at the end of the day, right? We we are we are one church. And I think that every one of us needs to make a commitment um to say, hey, I'm gonna find that local congregation. Because I hate to say you you can't you can't get full community online, right? You can't get that uh by yourself. Uh when you find it, you're like, I've been this is what I've been missing, right? Because it's God's design. You know, and, and that's one of the reasons I believe it's under so much attack is because the enemy doesn't like God's design. But when God's design is following Jesus, it works. You know right. what I'm saying? I think at the end of the day, we got to really look at ourselves as believers and say, hey, I always talk about this. I'm like, hey, if you if you go to a restaurant and the food is bad, right, you might not go back to that restaurant, but you, you're still going to go eat again. Right. You're still going to go find you another restaurant. And I believe that if, if God is who he says he is. Right. And the church is his design that in every city there is a faithful church somewhere. People may look a little bit different. The songs may be a little different. Right. But when you get to that place um, in your walk, and as we talk about being, um, you know, growing through that, those stages, sometimes you go to the church and you're not getting stuff receiving. That sometimes is time for you to give. Right. It's time for you to serve. It's time for you to be an intercessor. It's time for you to, to, to do different things. I mean, I have been a member. I've been a part of churches. Well, I wasn't getting a whole lot, but the Lord helped me to realize that I was there to help them, mm. right? I had to learn how to feed myself. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we're supposed to be growing up because we have something that, we, that we're supposed to give. Uh, so I just want to encourage everybody, don't give up on the church. Uh, ask God, to, just like you asking God to lead us in every day, ask him to lead you to the right church. Find a biblical-based church, man, with, with people who really love God and who are going to love you. And you, it, I'm trust, you, it, trust me, you will not be disappointed. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. And another thing I wanted to point out, man, one of the things that I would say if I had to put a highlight on the way, you know, the church works over there at BVCC, prayer is a big deal, you know, and that was something that was relatable to me because, you know, when I was on the ventilator, there was a lot of people praying for me. I didn't even know, you know, and it just see it full circle come around and for me to actually be there with you guys and fellowship with y'all, man, I, I'm just so blessed, you know, just to be a part of everything, you know, because things could have been different, you know, That's but right. God had another plan, you know. That's right. People praying and God moving. I mean, that's that's a formula for success in my book. Absolutely, brother. Now, um, I'm not going to hold you up too much longer because I know you got a busy life, man. You you run around like you're wearing uh, superhero outfits and all kinds of things. <laughs> So um, I got a, a quick question for you as far as uh, people being baptized. Um, is there any events coming up in the future maybe uh, to get some of that going again? Or like, what's your take on that right now? You mean just specifically the BBCC? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we are, we've already kind of got the, um, we're kind of going to be doing it. We're going to be doing it probably around the June, July time frame. Mm -hmm. um, so we're already kind of setting that up with our, uh, our parent church. Um, to use their baptismal pool. We haven't done a baptism probably since before COVID. So this will be our first one. But we're going to try to make it a big event um, and, and keep it going again. So, yeah, it, it's it's a it's an important coming out party day as we like. Right. You show the world the changes happen on the inside. Uh, but we will be doing that um, this summer. Absolutely. Any words of encouragement you want to lead the people with? I mean, at the end of the day, uh, follow Jesus. I mean, that's, that's the best thing I could tell you. You know, as we're making disciples, our job is to point people to Jesus. It's not, I'm not trying to, we're not supposed to try to make you look like me, sound like me, talk like me. It's supposed to be talking like him, looking like him, having his heart. You know, at the end of the day, uh, there's so many counterfeits, but when you know the real thing, you, you won't fall for it, for, for it all, the, all this falsehood, right? And, and I think when you really have your mind fixed on him, things line up, right? You may go through difficulty, you may go through setbacks, frustrations, but you keep moving forward, right? And I think getting to that place of saying, you know what? Number one, I want a relationship with Jesus. Number two, I want to be a part of a biblical community who is building up uh, disciples and fulfilling God's purpose through uh, the Great Commission, through disciple making, through serving the community. That is so powerful. And that's God's design, right? So I'm just believing that God's going to lead everybody on here to a, to a great church. Um, if you ever want to connect with us, we're online every single week. If you're ever in Hampton, Virginia, come check us out. We'd love to have you. Uh, and, and whatever questions that y'all have, don't give up on Jesus, number one. Don't give up on the church, number two. Um, it, it truly is a place uh, where you can grow. 
and um, and, and keep keep it Jesus, keep it Bible, and, and God's going to get the glory. So that's that's really, and I appreciate your time today. I thank you for having me on, uh, being patient through all the technical glitches and whatnot. But um, I know I know God has something to say, so I appreciate the time for sure. Absolutely, like I said, it's an honor to have you here. For anybody that want to check out the church, you can go to twenty one seventy one. Cunningham Drive in Hampton, Virginia. Uh, the doors open at 10.30 a.m. And when I tell you, when you get there, just just bring yourself and be, be uh, just come as you are. You know, that's one thing I would say, just come as you are. I know a lot of people ask me, do I need to wear a suit? Do I need to wear a tie? Do I need to wear all these things? Like, just come as you are because, you know, transformation happens at the heart. And, and I believe that's the true focus at uh, BVCC. And, and what he's really doing over there. So I just see nothing more than blessings on top of blessings for the ministry. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. Yeah, most definitely. I, hey, look, our only dress code is that you got to have some clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you just got to wear clothes. Exactly. So, look, I appreciate you again, my brother. It was an honor to talk to you. And uh, God bless you and the family. All right, man. Can, can I pray before we hop off? Uh, of course. All right, cool. Let, let me, let's, hit, let's hit it real quick. God, thank you for everybody who is uh, tuning in tonight. God, thank you for your planning, your purpose. Thank you for this podcast, Lord. And just we, we, we pray for, uh, for, for my brother, Dion, God, that you would just pour into him. Uh, allow him to touch more and more people for the kingdom. Allow him, God, to plant uh, seeds and to see those seeds grow. Uh, we pray, Father God, for everyone, Lord God, who is looking and searching. Lord God, we, we pray, Father God, as they draw near to you, that you would draw near to them. Blow their minds, God, with just the the purpose you have for their lives, the love you have for them, the identity that you have for them, God, and lead every step. God, we pray, Lord God, for the liberty that comes through Christ. We pray that you would raise us up to be disciples and you would do it all for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen and amen. I love it, man. God bless you. Love you, man. Appreciate you. Be a king and a legend, boy. That's a big one, huh? You ain't enough to just be a king. And you got the lion in the background, boy. You's a dangerous guy, man. <laughs> you are put through the fire. The only thing that kept me going was I knew it was going to happen. I believed it was going to happen. Oh, I used to print out that list, and I would put my name at the top. I would white out the person at the top, and I'd put my name. And I would print out that list and I'd keep it in my pocket for the next four months until one day the email that I got had my name at the top. See?